Let's just get some blockers here at the net. Give me some blockers. Tall girls, let's go. Tall college, let's go. College, let's go. Let's get on this side of the net. You guys are just blocking. Let's, wherever you are, let's just have you block and then switch with the person behind you. So let's get a couple of, one person behind her as well. Block and then switch. Go ahead. Good. Looks like no switch for you. So some of the techniques that you might be thinking about, I'll say it and we'll see if they're doing it. We just want their shoulders and their arms square. I don't really want them reaching outside of their body in our system. I prefer them not to do it. I don't want them jumping so high that their elbows are over the nets. All right? We have girls that are big and balls are goes up and they hit it off the top of their head and it hits the ceiling and you go, huh, maybe you're jumping a little high, huh? You know, field goal range. So don't go as high, go up and over. So let's get three people over here, tall, tall girls holding a volleyball. I want these guys to reach over, grab it, and hand it back to you, quickly. So get close enough to the net. Somebody right here. Go. So you're just holding the ball. You guys are reaching over, grabbing it, pulling it back. You have to, <laughs> you're not tall enough, is that what you're saying? She just has to jump higher. Let's go, go on your tiptoes, help her out. Help a sister out here. She's got glasses. She's handicapped. OK. So OK, if they jump pretty good, back up a little bit. Make them reach. Stay out of the net. Stay out of the net. So we want to keep them, want the arms still. I want them to be able to see the back of their hands. A lot of times we have pictures of our players blocking, and their eyes are closed, and they're like this. And I'm like, it makes sense to me, except I don't see the police telling you, uh, put your hands against the side of the car. Uh, there's nothing. You want to be in a position where you see your hands. You're going to use your hands. So what we'll do is some people is we'll just stand here. Give me a couple of balls over here. Who's our high jumper here? Yeah, we'll work together here. So I'll just toss some balls, and I'll toss it so she has to reach a little bit. Oh, that was somebody else's ball? Both hands. Because I want her to be seeing the ball. Reach, catch it, just press it down. Nice and easy. So I want them to move. I don't want them to just stand in one spot. Too many times you'll say, okay, I want you to give line. And they say, okay. So they give line. And they stand right here. I'm giving line. And the ball's over here. And they're still standing here. All right? And I'm like, hi. What are you doing? You told me to give line. And you did. Right? And you did. But if the ball's close to the net, on the net, you go get the ball. Anytime the ball is close to the net, all bets are off. Be aggressive. Tall girl, small girl, short girl, go get the ball. Right? Some people win jousts, some people never win jousts. All right? And they always say, How come I can't win a joust? And I go, I think that's why. All right? You identified it. It's you. All right? So we start a lot of drills with a joust. So we're going to play a game to 15, and I just alternate putting the ball between them. They hit the ball in, they play the ball out. That's how we start. We get better at jousting by doing that. I want them to press at contact. We don't want to get too complicated. I want to angle the ball back. If I've got people who are really big and they're pretty good at blocking, and some people come in the door, they're really good blockers. Some people, you spend a lot of time with them, and they have an aversion to blocking. All right? They can't get it. All right? But they have to stay in there, hang in there, because it may be coming. All right? I had a setter, Bonnie Bremner, who didn't have very many blocks, but had one against John's team in the Final Four. Uh, in one of our championships, one-on-one -on -one against arguably one of the best outside hitters in the country, and Bonnie was the first, was more surprised than anybody, all right? Because the play before that, I brought in a 6'5 kid to stand there and block for, and they, and they set somewhere else. So they have to stay with the plan, and they can't get frustrated, and they can't have, I don't know, the college, if the college is going to go to 
allowing you to hit the net. I hope not. It'll, it'll, look, uh, it'll look a little worse. I don't know why they're doing it in club. I see it all the time. But I want to keep the hands high, especially for the middles, to eliminate the need for perfect timing. Like John said about the speed of the play. He and I, a few years back, he had Faluque, uh, and I had Krista Harmato. And those two women, I would imagine, will be starting for the Olympics this year. But they had such a great respect and competition for each other, we would be, hey, good pass, don't run the one ball into Faluque. Not because Chris is not good, because Faluque is really good at blocking the one ball, all right? But run the slide. Let, you know, have her, you know, Logan's now a great blocker. Then Logan was a little younger blocker. So it, it's not avoiding it, but it's getting them to understand. So if you're playing against a team and you're an easy serving team, and how can you tell? Because the other team is pretty good and they keep running middle. Now you have to tell your middles, start with your hands up a little higher because you're going to have to be involved in the play a little quicker. Can't have your hands down here. I watch our blockers sometimes, and we're not a big commitment to block via the swing block, so I don't mind. People who swing block, not so bad. Have your hands lower. But, you know, we've had enough success without really committing to the swing block concept. But we spend time on it because we want our hitters in practice to hit against it. So they're not concerned about, oh my God, they swing block like, like there's a, you know, like that was a pill that made the other team good now. I don't want them reaching outside their shoulders. In our levels of play, which I think is good college, you know, uh, top 10, top 20 volleyball, I think there's enough players defensively that should be able to dig a hard hit ball. There are also some players that we deem undiggable because they're really good, all right? I mean, they're just really good. They hit really high, they hit wild angles, you know? And, and for those people, maybe you have to have a coaching decision, all right? So, you know, Colleen, you played, uh, you know, wherever. Did you play with, Sharissa played with you? Yeah, Sharissa at times was on, we couldn't prepare for her because we didn't even have a boy in our gym that hit like her. So we couldn't prepare for it. So maybe we'd say, hey, when we play them, you have to serve tougher when she's in the front row so they can't get her the ball. Or miss your serve and they can't get her the ball. And maybe that'll make her angry. But we don't want to have too many rotations where the person gets an easy serve, runs the same play, and keeps rotating on you, and, it's, and you're thinking it's OK. So uh, movement patterns. We like to start with two different concepts. So if, uh, let's have somebody here and somebody where she is right there. So maybe right now they're starting in, OK? So they're starting in. I want them to take both. On this side, she'll take a big step to her right, close with her left, and block. You'll do the opposite over there. Ready? Go. Just good. OK. Go the other direction. Uh, OK. Now back together. Start again together. You're going to go to your left. You're going to go to your right on this side. Ready? Go. <laughs> listening's a skill, and I love it. To me, listening's the most important skill. 